club president of the Astronomy Club or the Ocean Club, and I'm also your AS representative for GSMA and Ocean majors this year. So if any of you have any problems with your courses or your major, if you're GSMA and Ocean, you can come to me and ask me any questions, email me anytime. I'm here for you guys and to make sure that you're, you feel heard this year. So I'm going to go ahead and start the letting all of your speech. Um, today we want to acknowledge that we gather on traditional land of the indigenous people past and present. For thousands of years, this land has been home to the Patwan people. Today, there are federally, there are three federally recognized Patwan tribes, Cachal Dihi Band of Wintun Indians of the Kaluza Indian community, Kletzal Dihi Wintun Nation, and Yoka Dihi Wintun Nation. The Patwan people have remained committed to stewardship of this land over many centuries, is in cherished and protected as the elders have instructed the young the generations. We are honored and grateful to be here today on the traditional lands. And with that, I'm going to introduce BP McMahon. Let's give it up for Ona. That took a lot of courage. Just want to sort of um, share that you know having to do that as, as a way of introducing you all to our campus and the land that we're on uh, is a representation of how we are very student centered here. So if any of you are um, interested in reading a land acknowledgement that will be occasions in the future, uh, then we'd love your participation. Uh, as Anna said, my name is Kathleen McMahon, and I'm your vice president for Cadet Leadership and Development. And you may not really know what that means. Uh, so what it means is, uh, if you think about, you have your academic life, and then you have your out of the classroom life. And you live on campus, and you live here, and it's your whole life. And so if you have any concerns about your whole life, if things are going well or not so well, um, I could be a person to be of service to you. Um, things like residence life, uh, participation in activities on campus, involvement, uh, how we support cadets throughout your four years, or five years, or three years. Um, that, that's my job here. And my office is in Morrow Cove, so um, I'm often um, around that marketplace area, and you feel free to stop and say hello to me anytime you like. Um, just a little bit about me, I've been here a little over two years, and prior to coming here, I worked at uh, some very large public institutions like UCLA and Cal Poly Slow and Boston University. And I've also worked at smaller private institutions. And what really drew me here is the small academy campus life with a focus on leadership development and really developing the whole person for um, a successful life and career. So I'm really excited to have this session with you all this morning where we're going to introduce you to a lot about Cal Maritime. And uh, hopefully it will really ground you and inspire you in what you're doing here. Um, two other things about me is that I live on campus. So I live up, um, just past uh, Upper and near McAllister in one of those houses. And um, you'll love and see me on campus with one of my dogs. And I would love it if you would say hello and greet my dogs and um, you know tell me how you're doing. Um, and the other thing about me, um, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, I have two kids in college, so I, I have a, a glimpse of what you're going through, okay? I have a daughter that uh, goes to school 3,000 miles away, and a son who just completed his first year, and then is taking a semester off. So I, I understand that things are not always um, perfect and linear, and if you have any um, hurdles along the way, I hope you will feel free to approach me. Um, so this morning's session, uh, you will hear from President Cropper, your president, uh, about the mission and a lot about Cal Maritime. And then you're gonna hear from your provost, Lori Schrader, um, about your incoming class and some tips that she has for you to be successful. Um, and then I'll come back and talk a little bit about what we offer within Campus Life. Sound good? Yeah. Are you awake? Yeah. All right. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna introduce President Crawford. Yeah. President Crawford is the 14th president of Cal Maritime and he began his presidency in 2012 after a 31-year career in the U.S. Navy. He's a graduate of Iowa State University with a degree in engineering operations, received his commission through the Navy ROTC program, and 
was designated as a naval aviator in 1982. In his Navy career, President Crabber embarked on eight extended deployments on six different aircraft carriers and flew nearly 5,000 hours in 43 different aircrafts while logging over 1,200 carrier arrested landings. Have any of you seen Top Gun? I mean, yeah. Yeah. just say. Me too, I'm pretty impressed. His career took him to Somalia, Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan, and other hot spots around the globe while leading combat air units. President Cropper graduated with distinction from the U.S. Naval War College, earning a master's degree in national security and strategic studies, and holds additional degrees from the University of Tennessee and the Catholic University of America. He also served as a federal executive fellow for the Brookings Institute as a military assistant for the Office of Secretary of Defense. In his current role, he has served in multiple nonprofit organizations around the area, and here at Cal Maritime, he works closely with campus faculty, staff, and student leaders to rebuild and reinvent the academy of the 21st century. Please welcome your president, Admiral Tom. Well, good morning. good morning. Okay, raise your hand if you're awake. Okay, good. Me too. I see a couple of your orientation leaders are still are not there exhausted. So thank you, orientation leaders. Okay, thanks for the work you've done, and thank you to all of our staff. And welcome to Maritime Academy. So here's your first quiz. So when I say, what time is it, you say? Maritime! No, you say, I want you to wake up the neighbors. What time is it? Maritime! And what time is it? Maritime! Okay, great. So there's time in maritime. So let me just give you a, a little clue about maritime. Remember this, early is on time, and on time is late. late. Okay, right? So that's, that's, time is important in the maritime, in everything we do. It's not just ships, it's everything. Ports, logistics, oceanography, everything we do, time is important. Okay, so you pass your first quiz. How many of you picked us? How many of your parents picked us? Or you? Okay. I'm glad you picked us for you. Okay. So, you picked us and we picked you because there is an admissions process here. See, I feel pretty special. Anybody know where Cal State Fullerton is? Okay. How many people go to Cal State Fullerton? About 40,000. About 40,000. And how many people did they graduate last year? About 10,000. About a quarter of them. Right? 10,000. So we've been around for 90, I do my public math here, 93 years. And we've graduated in 93 years, just about 8,000. So you're joining a very select group of people who've come to the academy. Anybody heard, see this expression before, history? Whose history starts now? Oh, Yours. This is not, this will, you'll be part of my history, but this is your history starting now. And whether you're just out of high school, or you're a transfer, or you're starting a second career, you're a veteran, there are a lot of people here who are restarting, rebooting, and setting a course for their history. And that's part of what you're doing. And we're gonna help you create your own history. Create your own story. Okay? But it's your history. And you need to own it. It's not somebody else's fault. Somebody didn't push you over the wall. You're going to get there with a lot of help. We're going to help you. The person next to you is going to help you. So I want you to look at the people next to you right now. Just look at them. Okay? So we're not going to play this stupid game like the person, one of the two of you is not going to be here. That's not how we do things here. Okay? We don't play that game. What I want you to do is make a commitment to the person sitting next to you on either side of you and say, I'm going to help you get through the academy.
most people in red shirts, and all the people on your faculty and your staff are going to do the same thing. We want you to graduate. We want you to be successful. We want your history to start on a really good note. Can we turn down the lights then? Just thanks, Chris. You don't need to see my mug. <laughs> so some people come here for the job prospects, and I just want you to elevate your thinking a bit. There's certainly a job in here, but you're joining a profession. Literally joining a profession. There's a professional standards. There's expectations. So we're not just going to teach you the stuff you need in the classroom. We're going to teach you the things you need to succeed when you leave. We're going to teach you some things you need to succeed while you're here. But a lot of things we're going to do are going to teach you how to be successful when you walk out the door. And when you walk out of the door, my hope is that every one of you, when you walk in the door to your first job, the first word out of your boss's mouth is, wow. Wow. She knows how to lead. He knows how to lead. That's somebody that I'm going to create opportunities for in this company, in this organization. That's what I want for you. That's why I'm part of your history. I hope some of you are here for a calling, like a calling to service calling beyond yourself to serve other people through the work you're going to do, to be thinking about how to improve society, how to improve life for other people, how to be aware of some of the lucky people that we are. We're lucky to be here, and I certainly feel that way. How many people have been to sea on the ocean? Not a cruise ship. Okay. Thank you. It's a big ocean, right? There's a, there's, it's a big, it's a big, big, big sea, and it's very unforgiving. So there's an expectation that things have to be right. There's plenty of books written. There's movies made about some foibles at sea and how they turn into disasters. We, we don't want to be a part of that. That's not part of our history. We don't want that in our history. So we're going to give you the skills to be ready for that kind of, of environment or to support people in that environment. We're going to train, educate, and develop. So let's start with educate. Where's that happen? In your classroom, you're going to hear a lot about that from the provost. We're going to train you, which is a little bit different. It's the application of the education. And then we're going to develop you. What are we developing you to do? Lead. We want you to go lead. We want you to walk in and, and have that employer say, wow. And so it's not just about the book work, which is very important. But this is what makes the Academy special. And we want you to be thinking about that in global context. Anybody seen our rankings? Anybody yeah. pay attention to that stuff? Yeah, we don't chase them. Honestly, we don't chase the rankings, but they come up pretty well for us. I think the NASDAQ just made us number eight. College in California, number one was Stanford. So I think we're pretty close. <laughs> <clears throat> but we have people who come from outside the organization all the time that do review our programs, our engineering programs, our maritime, our uh, marine transportation programs as the Coast Guard. And then we have people from outside who look at us from a different point of view, like Forbes and Money and NASDAQ and, and uh, like I said, US News. So it's a great place to be. A lot of people see it that way. Sometimes it's, it's hard to, to square that it's a, great, it's, it's a great place to be, but it's kind of a hard place to get through, right? So we're not trying to making it hard to make it hard. It's just that what we do is demanding and we're gonna give you the support you need to make it through the demanding piece, because that's what the, the uh, industry is expecting when you leave here. And I told your parents last night if they had walked from the quad up to upper res, that they would understand why we're the 55th college. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who are worried about freshman 15, I don't think you'll have to worry about that. Okay, we're in the classroom. 
You have professionals coming out of the industry. You have highly, highly qualified faculty who are going to be looking after your intellectual development. They know their craft. They're going to teach you in a way that makes you very, very ready for the profession. So it is about profession and professional knowledge. Okay, so it's not just a bunch of information you're not regurgitating. You have to master this. Okay, so part of this is making sure we master the information, and we're not just learning information, we're learning to think. And then we're going to train the learning by doing, the application of that knowledge in workforce kind of uh, things. Is this going to be fun? Yes, it's going to be fun. This is going to be fun. This is the fun part. This is where you get to start the show your stuff and prove sometimes to yourself that you know how to do something, okay? That you can apply that knowledge as a professional. It will be the fun part. It also will be difficult, but it will be fun and rewarding. Okay, up on the left is a, called MacArthur's Corrective Map of the World. You might catch where MacArthur's from. Australia, why? I was in the center at the top. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so how you look at the world depends on where you sit or stand. And so one of the things that's really important to us is that you understand that you're going to work with 160 different nations across the globe as one of our grads. You will. In fact, we have a group from Kazakhstan talking to us right now. They, they really like our school. They want to do something with us. Okay. Anybody been to Kazakhstan? Okay, good. Come see me because I've been there too. Okay. 70%, future 70, 80, 90. 70% of the world's covered by that blue stuff. It's a lot of ocean. Okay. 80%. 80% of the world's population lives within 50 miles of the oceans. You know why? Because they depend on the protein in the sea, in many cases for survival. And 80% of the seafood in this state is imported. 90% of all the world's trade, everything moving, including your Apple Watch and your phones, and your computers, and probably what you're wearing, much of it comes over the water. 90%. It's great that UPS, FedEx have airplanes because they keep moving in, but most is coming on a ship. 95% of the world's trade is moving, in value is moving across ships. And how many of you use email? How many of you have emailed someone overseas? Okay, it's going by undersea cable. 90% of internet traffic moves by undersea cable, not by satellite. So a lot going on and making sure, this is why we want you to be very aware of what happens on the globe. And then leadership. As you heard yesterday, and maybe you'll hear it again today, like leadership is learned and developed in many ways. It's, it's learned and developed in athletics. It's, uh, it's learned in the core, it's learned in student government here, associated students. It's learned in clubs. It's learned as a residence hall officers. There's so many ways to do this. You want to do something in community engagement? We've got leadership opportunities for you. They're here. Make them part of your history. Take the opportunity to learn how to lead well. Okay. This is a values-based kind of place. So I'm going to go ask a few questions. Somebody tell me what's teamwork? Raise your hand. If you don't. Uh, working with others effectively. Okay. You're not working with others effectively. Who else wants? I'm gonna hand you the mic. I'm gonna hand you the mic if you don't look at me. <laughs> uh, being able to work with others. Yeah, working with others, right? Teamwork is working with others. So, uh, I have a really good friend, I saw him this weekend, his name is Dan Bursch, 
his call sign Radar because he looks like Radar O'Reilly. That's some, someone you wouldn't know from old MASH TV. <laughs> <laughs> but Radar was an astronaut. And he made three shuttle missions. It was my squadron mate. So he made three shuttle missions. And then he went to the International Space Station. I said, well, what was the difference? He goes, well, you know, shuttle mission was 12 days and the space station was about six months. Anything else different? He goes, yeah. He said, uh, it's like taking a family vacation in a Winnebago and nobody gets, can get out of the vehicle for six months. That's when you learn teamwork. And that's not too far from being on small boats and ships. Okay. How about trust? Who wants to tell me about trust? Having faith. Having faith. Having faith. Having faith in each other. Faith in each other. <laughs> Being able to hold like, uh, the person next to you accountable. Okay, holding the person next to you accountable. Who else? Was? One more. Uh, having reliability on each other. Okay, cool. In fact, that's the next word. All right. So they go together, don't they? On purpose. Teamwork and trust and reliability. Okay. So you, you've got to learn how to be reliable and trustworthy and a good teammate. Right? So those are the things. But here's what I want you to learn. What's that say? Read it to me. If I say it. Okay. Who is the agent? Who is the agent of self discipline? Okay, who is your agent of self-discipline? Say it. Me, right? You. So if I am the agent of your self-discipline, at the end of this year, we have failed. You and I have failed. You need to be in charge of you. That's the big question today. Are you ready to be in charge of you? Are you, now I'm not talking about this big, like, high blue cloud, or blue sky and clouds. Are you ready to be in charge of you? Are you going to show up to practice on time? Are you going to get out of bed on time to make it to formation? Are you going to go to class every day? Who's, who's going to be the agent, the author of your history and self-discipline? It's got to be you. Okay, we're going to give you the skills. If you don't have some self-discipline skills, we're going to help you. Okay. But I want you to be focusing on this in your first couple of weeks. Get in, into the groove, into a routine. A routine of self-discipline will be really, really important for you to be effective and successful. Okay, who knows what grit is? Anybody heard of grit? What's grit? Sticking with something even when it's hard. Okay. I saw a hand back here. Who? Stand up and shout it. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Great game of self-discipline. You can't rely on yourself to do it. Okay. Did you hear that? Anybody else? Yeah, go ahead and stand up and shout it to the rapper. Accepting failure and keep going. One more. Perseverance. <laughs> Perseverance. Okay, raise your hand if you had to persevere. Okay. Now, everybody raise your hand because you're going to have to persevere here. Okay? Again, not because it's hard, it's just different. You're entering a new era. Things are going to be different. There's a little bit of disorientation, which is why we do orientation, to help you understand where you are, what's expected, and how we're going to help you. We're going to treat you like the adult you are. We're going to treat you like an adult. Anybody heard of adulting classes? Do they actually have them in some schools? Adulting classes. We're just going to treat you like an adult. That may feel different for some of you. I'm just being really honest with you, okay? I have, I have, I have three kids. It may feel really different for you to be treated like an adult. You know you're an adult, and many of you, maybe you transfers or veterans or second career folks, yeah, you're, but we're gonna treat everybody like an adult. 
So our relationship is with you. And I had a really great opportunity to talk to your, our, your wonderful families yesterday. And I explained to them that we're, you, our relationship is with you as an adult. And if you are having problems as an adult, we're going to work with you as an adult. Okay? That your responsibilities are to yourselves and self-discipline and the people in your, in your um, divisions and companies and classrooms and teams. That's where you're going to get help. You all just promise each other you're going to make sure that, that you would be successful. Okay? But it's going to take some grit. That means you're going to grow. So I want you to understand, this is, it's not the academy necessarily. It's going to be this change in expectation as an adult. And life is hard. Does everybody understand? Life is hard. When I talked to your families yesterday, I said there's, this, there's two kinds of parents that we have discovered, in, at least in my decade here. One is called the helicopter parent. And one's called the snowplow parent. And they snowplow all of the problems out of the way so that their young person is successful. Okay, guess who's going to be the snowplow now? Us. You. And we'll help you. We'll help you. You're not going to do it alone. But you, you're going to confront some of the issues that come your way. They're not going to be pushed out of the way for you. You're going to have to confront those. Okay, and we're going to help you resolve it. Because life is, is going to get challenging. There's challenges in life. But what's really rewarding and even fun is that even though things can be hard, there's a lot of reward in doing something that's difficult and doing it well. And that's really what a lot of you have chosen to do by coming here. So get out your grit. Get a, you can go to the bookstore. We don't have any on, on sale yet. You're going to have to find it somewhere, right? You're going to look inside and find the grit. Find the determination and the persistence. If you run out, look to your left and right. Look to those people in, who are in red shirts. Not just this week, but throughout, throughout your time here. Pretty soon, you'll look at a blink of an eye, you'll be sitting in red shirt. Helping other people as a, as a teammate. So I really want you to know that you're going to face obstacles. It's part of life. Life has disappointments. Life has failures. Life has pain. And disappointment is acceptable. And failures are acceptable. And pain is acceptable. But what's not acceptable is quitting. That's part of your self discipline. We're not going to quit. We're going to look for resources to address obstacles. We're going to look beside us. We're going to go to our faculty members. We're going to go to staff people. We're going to go to our friends on campus. We're going to go to our teammates on our teams, people in our organizations, in student government, or our RHO. We're going to find somebody to help us overcome obstacles. That's how we're all going to be successful. So, I want you to try to think of the obstacles that you might be facing and how important or how big they are. And I'm going to show you a, a quick uh, uh, video of about 20 years ago of some folks who were in our industry and handled a really difficult uh, problem very well. Pretty powerful, huh? Okay, this is what I was talking about when I said values, right? Learning the values, what's important. There was no plan, no training. We just count on people for teamwork, okay. reliability. What's that other value? Trust. Imagine the trust. All these people trying to leave had an implicit trust that they're jumping on the boats because they trust. Maritime professionals around. Pretty amazing. So, here's what's pretty neat. You're going to get a gift, 
in less than four years, you're going to be doing that. And then you're going to go out and be ready for anything. Welcome aboard. One more question. What time is it?